My name is Jairus. This is Jairus Vol. Welcome to Real Life Iron Man Forearm Rocket Launcher Build Part 6. In the last video I had this pretty much at this point, and then I spent about two days trying to get this to work better and make these plastic panels. And I have a bunch of film from it. But I had a really hard time getting these shaped right and fitting together really tight so that there's no gaps in anything and I decided to just go ahead and scrap them and start again. And this part got a little bit warped also because I was trying to give it some three dimensionality by pushing the edges down and that didn't work. And the servos didn't have enough strength to be able to lift this up and down consistently. So I moved them to the front, these two here. The point at which this pulls is now much higher and it's further away from the pivot point and it puts more leverage here and since there's two of them it lifts it up and down absolutely no problem now. And then I also mounted the servos on the sides to make the side panels move out. So now I need to make the side panels and hook those up. So all the hours and hours of filming that I did don't really matter, we're just going to skip over all of that since I just screwed up a whole bunch and I'm going to start fresh with this make new side panels, make a new top panel, and get these servos to actuate the sides. Here we go. Can I mention I'm in Florida and it's stupid hot here? Well, that's pretty much about as close as I care to get it. So now I just need to shape these back edges a little bit, make sure that they're all flush and lined up, and then split it down the front and shape the outside. It's the way I want it now, so I'm gonna split it right down the front. Bam! Now it'll match up together perfectly. Now that I have these done, it's time to make some mover things to make them whip, whip, whip. That is actually four brackets for connecting the movement arms onto the side panels. This way they're all exactly the same size and they're all drilled in exactly the same place. I have to clean them up. There has to be no flashing so that nothing binds on these, which is time consuming, which is why I didn't show you making all those little pieces for the main movement mechanism that lifts the rocket launcher up and down. So now I have to do that and bend them and try to get them mounted onto my side pieces and then figure out where the movement arms are gonna go and that will determine where these go. It kind of all happens at the same time. That's why this part is really, really difficult. Plus I need it to move it. It can't just rock it out because if it did that, it would, it would move like this. So one arm has to hit at a different point than, a diff than the other one, that way it moves to the outside like, like this, you know, not like that. It doesn't just fold open, it has to like slide around the outside of the armor. So I'm not really sure what to do. To clean the tiny bit of flashing off of these drill holes, I just use a bigger drill bit. I used to have a countersink that I could use to do it, but a bigger drill bit works fine. Also. You can just roll it around in the hole and it cleans it up and makes it perfect. Pro tip, all of these are made out of T6 aluminum 
and T6 won't bend to a 90 very well. It likes to snap in half. So I heated all of this metal up with a torch for a really long time and then I tested it to see if it would bend. Uh, and it bends, so hopefully I can bend these into 90s and it'll bend and it won't just split in half. If it does split in half on one, then I'm gonna heat the other three up until they're really super hot and then I'll try to bend those. And if that works, then I'll just make another one and heat that up to replace the one that I broke. I probably should have just made five, that way I had a spare. Now I just gotta get the other three to bend and hope they don't break. This one did just fine. There we go, four hinge points. I forgot to mention, T6 is temper level in aluminum. There's also T3 and I'm sure there's other stuff. The higher the number, the more tempered it is. And the more tempered it is, it's kind of like steel. It's more likely to snap or break or chip. Uh, the lower the temper, the easier it is to bend. So with this being T6, there was no way it was gonna bend, but it was thin and it was what I wanted to use because it worked well for the application. If you heat aluminum, the temper goes out of it. After aluminum cools down, it does gain temper back eventually, but it's like a time thing. Like old aluminum is more brittle than new aluminum, I guess is my point. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. T6, heat it up, then you can bend it. Pro tip, number two. I made these little movement arms before. They're just equal length sticks of aluminum and the hole is drilled at the same place. They attach right there, directly on the servo arm. Now, that means I don't need a joint at the bottom for one movement arm. And these all go at the top because there will be four hinge points on the panel itself, but I need two hinge points at the bottom. So I have to make two more plates and I don't know where I'm going to mount them but they need to be offset to the right location with the right length arm that clears the armor that allows this to move. So now I need to figure that out. It's kind of a mystery. I think I'm gonna put these on first and attach it to these panels before I do it. That way I can see how it's gonna move. I'm gonna use hot glue for temporary attachment. See, so that works, but that's why I need that second set of arms because these are not coming together correctly. They need to be like that. At least that wants to fit inside right. See what I'm saying? And I need the other set of arms to help make this more stable. Obviously that one set is not enough. It moves around too much, but at least that works. Looks pretty cool now though, doesn't it? Unfortunately, I'm gonna stop this part here because it's been a while since I put a video out and I've been working on this for a long time and I just ran into another major problem. And I'll show you. This thing, the lid is hot glued on like I believe I said at one point and if you can see right down in there, the hot glue is thicker on one side than on the other. So unless I could match that exactly when I go to reassemble this thing, because I still need to take the lid off to sand it and paint it, and then hot glue isn't like holding it on that tight. So I need to take it off and I need to finish it. But once I do that, if it's not on in exactly the same way and I build the mounts for the side panels, because they're on an angle, if this moves up and down, they'll be lower or higher and therefore the mounts should be further in or further out or higher up or higher down. So, because of the interference, because you're talking about three different planes of movement, right? So I need to take this off, mount it, finish it, mount it permanently, and then finish doing the brackets to make sure everything is gonna work out all right. <sighs> problems, too many problems. Ooh, also, if you wanna support me on Patreon, 
That would be absolutely awesome at this point. As always, thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to catch the rest of the series if you're not already and turn on notifications so that it tells you whenever a new video of mine comes out. And I will see you guys soon. Later. Back from the dead. Also, I just wanted to mention that if this isn't coming across as difficult, getting this side movement mechanism to coincide with the top and having nothing interfere and have it all work together is very difficult. And this is one of those times where you might be doing a project and nothing is going right and you have to keep redoing it. And sometimes to make it go faster, and this is something that I need to learn, is instead of just sitting there trying to think about how to fix it, continue to try things. The trial and error process usually makes it go faster than just trying to work it out in your head. Pro tip number three.